Yeah, I talk first. <laughs> All right. Hey, good evening, everyone. Thanks for joining us tonight for the first of our midweek Advent services. We are doing the Robins of Lent this year. So we're not doing the Batman or the main character. We're doing the sidekick. So we've got Mordecai this week. Next week is Hagar. Um, and then we've got a few more, and I'm just blanking on where we're going after that. But um, thanks for being here. Um, I think it's going to be a wonderful time of learning about some folks that we don't generally talk about on Sundays and, um, and find out what they have to say for us in our faith journey together. So thanks again for being here. Uh, we welcome Doug Wagaman with us tonight. Um, he's going to help me sing through Holden. Um, hopefully you received that in an email today. If you didn't, let me know, and I'll make sure you get a copy of that. Um, you can print that off if that's easier for you, or Ken's going to have it on the screen, and we're going to be scrolling through with the music. Um, I don't know how well that's going to work, but that's what we're going to try. So um, we'll, we're going to give that a go, and God forgive us for all the copyright laws that we're breaking in doing so. Okay, you ready to roll? Let's go. Jesus Christ, you are the light of the world. The, the light, light no darkness, darkness can overcome. overcome. Stay with us now, for it is evening. And, and the, the day, day is almost over. Let your light scatter the darkness. And, and shine within your people here.
prayers come before you, O God, as incense, and may your presence surround and fill us, so that in union with all creation, we might sing your praise and your love in our lives. Amen. Amen. The reading for tonight is from Esther chapter 4, and it kind of falls in the middle of the story, so um, it might not make sense, but it'll make sense later on. So this is Esther chapter 4. When Mordecai learned all that had been done, which is the plot to kill the king, Mordecai tore his clothes and put on sackcloth and ashes and went throughout the city, wailing with a loud and bitter cry. He went up to the entrance of the king's gate, for no one might enter the king's gate clothed with sackcloth. In every province, wherever the king's command and his decree came, there was great mourning among the Jews, with fasting and weeping and lamenting, and most of them laying in sackcloth and in ashes. When Esther's maids and her eunuchs came and told her the queen was deeply distressed, she sent garments to clothe Mordecai so that he might take off his sackcloth, but he would not accept them. Then Esther called for Hathak, one of the king's eunuchs, who had been appointed to attend her, and ordered him to go to Mordecai to learn what had happened and why. Hath, oh, Hathak, sorry, it's Hath, Hathak, went to Mordecai in the open square of the city in front of the king's gate. And Mordecai told him all that had happened to him and the exact sum of money that Haman had promised to pay into the king's treasuries for the destruction of the Jews. Mordecai also gave him a copy of the written decree issued in Susa for their destruction, that he might show it to Esther, explain it to her, and charge her to go to the king to make supplication to him and entreat him for her people. Hathak went and told Esther what Mordecai had said. Then Esther spoke to Hathak and gave him a message for Mordecai, saying, all the king's servants and all the peoples of the king's provinces know that if any man or woman goes to the king inside the inner court without being called, there is but one law. All alike are to be put to death. Only if the king holds out the golden scepter to someone may that person live. I myself have not been called to come to the king for 30 days. 
When they told Mordecai what Esther had said, Mordecai told them to reply to Esther, Do not think that in the king's palace you will escape any more than all the other Jews. For if you keep silence at such a time as this, relief and deliverance will rise from, 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 or excuse me, for the Jews from another quarter, and you and your father's family will perish. Who knows? Perhaps you have come to this royal dignity for just such a time as this. Then Esther said in reply to Mordecai, Go, gather all the Jews to be found in Susa, and hold a fast on my behalf, and neither eat nor drink for three days, night or day. I and my maids will also fast as you do. After that I will go to the king, though it is against the law, and if I perish, I perish. Mordecai then went away and did everything as Esther had ordered him. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. So Mordecai was a pretty interesting fellow. And I only gave you just a snippet of the story. I mean, he's in all nine chapters of the book of Esther. And he plays a, a much larger role than what I realized. So even though I read just a little bit, it, it seems that his story is very integral to the story of Esther, and it also seems that without him, Esther, <clears throat> Esther would have never been queen. So let me fill you in on some of the details, just in case you haven't read the book of Esther lately, or maybe you've never read it at all. Um, either way, it deserves another read. It's a, it's a fascinating read. So Mordecai was a Jewish man um, working for the government. He lived in Persia, which is modern-day Iran, excuse me, King Xerxes is, is the first, is the king, and he has this wife named Vashti. And he summons her to this grand banquet so the men can admire her beauty. Um, one of the, the feminist scholars that I read suggested that she was supposed to appear naked so that the men could admire her beauty and her body. And, and perhaps that is the reason why she refuses to go. But nevertheless, she refuses to go, and she is banished then from the kingdom because she denied the king his request. Xerxes then summons all the maidens of the land. Did we lose, did we lose sound? Okay. Um, I just heard a crackling in the sanctuary. It sounded like we lost something. So anyway, um, Xerxes summons all the maidens of the land to come and audition, so to say, to be his wife. And Hadassah goes, this young woman named Hadassah, and she takes the name of Esther. And this name is given to her by her cousin Mordecai, um, who adopted her when her parents were killed when she was a little girl. So Esther then goes off to see the king, and ultimately she is chosen to be his wife. Um, Mordecai then overhears two of the eunuchs plotting to kill the king. He tells Esther, who tells the king, and ultimately saves his life. Um, this man named Haman then comes to power, and he decides that he wants all the people of the land to bow down to him. Well, Mordecai refuses to do that because he's Jewish, and it's against the law of Moses to bow down to anyone. And Haman gets so angry that he decides to kill all the Jewish people residing in the land. Well, Mordecai overhears these plans, which is where we pick up the story, and he reports these plans to Esther, and she says, as we heard, what can I do? And he tells her that she should use her influence with the king. And he says his, the most famous line of the entire book of Esther, who knows, perhaps you have come to royal dignity for just such a time as this. So Esther manages to get an audience with the king. She goes in, even though she's not supposed to. He extends his scepter, as we heard, and um, she tells the king of this plan for his destruction, or excuse me, for the destruction of the Jews. Xerxes believes her, and he has Haman executed. And more happens, and Esther is honored, blah, blah, blah. And honor ultimately, Mordecai is promoted to the royal vizier, and becomes second only to King Xerxes himself. 
it's, it's a fascinating story, and I'd encourage you to give it a read. Like I said, it's only nine chapters. You could read it in one sitting quite easily. Um, very, very interesting story. Um, so what can we learn from Mordecai? Well, clearly, he was extremely intelligent, and perhaps we might even call him shrewd, because he's very careful to tell Esther not to reveal her heritage. Don't tell the king who you are, he says, until the most opportune time. And so when Esther goes in to, sp to beg the king to spare the Jews, her plea was more meaningful to Xerxes because he loved her. And it's at that time that she reveals that she herself is Jewish. Mordecai was also very well connected, and he knew when to use those connections, such as to, um, to his cousin Esther. And using those connections, he ultimately saves the life of the king. Mm, excuse me. We also see that Mordecai was extremely courageous because it takes a lot of courage. It takes a pretty good backbone not to, to succumb to the pressure to bow down to Haman. And of course, of course, Mordecai refuses to do this because in doing so was to acknowledge Haman as a god. And Mordecai loved and was loyal to Yahweh, to the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And so clearly, Mordecai felt that following the law of the Lord was much more important than following the rules of the kingdom. I think there's some wisdom for us there as well. But perhaps the biggest lesson that we learn from Mordecai is how he trusted God to provide and as I said earlier, his most famous line from the story is in conversation with Esther when he says, who knows, perhaps you have come to royal dignity for just such a time as this. Mordecai shows his faith here. He trusts that God is going to provide for God's people. Now, Mordecai doesn't know exactly how God's going to do that, but he knows that God will act when the time is right. And it seems as though he thought God would act through Esther and through her influence. And he was right about that. And this, this is a big deal because Mordecai trusted God to be in the process. And Mordecai let go of the outcome. He was willing to let that be whatever the Lord wished for it to be. And finally, Mordecai seemed to understand the stewardship of power. And by that, I mean he understood what Uncle ben, sen, sen, sorry, Uncle ben said to Peter Parker in Spider-Man when he says, with great power comes great responsibility. Mordecai did not use his power or his connections for himself, but he used the power of his influence to help others, particularly the king and the Jewish people. He used his position of power to advocate for peace for the entire kingdom. Mordecai understood something that I think we seek to understand about ourselves today. That when God blesses us, God doesn't just bless us. God wants us to use the gifts we are given to bless other people. God has given us intellect and wisdom, and God expects us to use it. And I, I also think that we are to trust that God is, God is that, I can't talk tonight, I'm so sorry. We are to trust that God is in the details and let go of the outcome. Because we can trust that God's got that too. May we follow the Mordecai's example of faithfulness in our lives. And may we use all that we have been given to bless others. For we too have been called to such a time as this. Amen. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. Is that it?
great and merciful God, source and ground of all goodness and life, give to your people the peace that passes all understanding and the will to live your gospel of mercy and justice through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. God, remember us in your love and teach us to pray. Our Our Father Father in heaven, heaven, hallowed hallowed be your name. name. Your Your kingdom kingdom come. come. Your Your will will be done done on earth earth as in heaven. heaven. Give Give us today our daily bread. Forgive Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Let us bless our God. Praise and thanks to you. peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. As we were getting started, I meant to announce, and I forgot, I apologize. Um, Our hearts and our prayers surround the Nyquist family this evening and in the days to come. Uh, Trudy's husband passed away. Uh, Lois and Murr's daughter's husband passed away yesterday rather unexpectedly following a surgery. So um, our hearts and our, our prayers go out to them as, as they deal with this grief and in this time of sorrow. So um, be blessed and be at peace, and we'll see you Sunday morning. Thanks again for joining us. We're so glad that you're here, and I pray that the, the story of Mordecai was a blessing to you. Have a wonderful evening. <laughs>